A chance to make it into the Elite Eight of the Champions League is on the line as we host Atleti at Craven Cottage, plus a quarterfinal matchup in the FA Cup, and yet yeah, we still don't know who we're playing. And welcome back, everyone, to episode number 90 of Bottom to the Top. I'm Mr. Cellophane. Welcome to our journeyman save here in FM24. And the reason we don't know yet is because the match we were supposed to play in the FA Cup quarterfinal on the 12th of March, well, our opponent isn't going to be decided until the 16th of March. That is when Man United and Bournemouth face off in the fifth round of the competition. Man U currently sitting fifth in the Premier League. Bournemouth, they're in the championship. We kind of want Bournemouth. I'd like as easy a path into the semifinals as humanly possible. Thoughts of that, though, are going to have to sit on the back burner, and we may have to play league matches against Chelsea and Sunderland before we even get to that quarterfinal. But that is not where our focus is now. It is on our home match in the Champions League against Atletico de Madrid. Nicolas Shevlina is getting the start in goal. The back four is going to be Guest, Sissoko, Gnayem, and Ivan Fresneda coming in for Couchman, who we mentioned at the end of the last episode has been suspended for this one. Tom Burford also serving out a suspension for too many yellow cards. Nikolai Romyantsev is going to take his spot in the advanced position in the midfield next to Kim Young Suk. Larson is going to drop down to the base. It's going to be Toshimitsu Endo and Federico Guerrero on the wings, which means that Emmanuel Omega is going to get the start as our number nine, leading our offense, hopefully, to victory. And at the risk of sounding overly pessimistic, that may be easier said than done. So while we have not lost in 11 straight matches in the Premier League, and we have not lost anywhere since the 4-0 drubbing at the hands of Barcelona at the Camp Nou in the league phase of the Champions League, it has been a number of matches since we have scored more than one goal. We have scored in every match that we have played recently, but most of the time it's just the once One goal could be all it will take because right now we enter this match tied on aggregate 1-1 with Atletico de Madrid. We are at home. We are not controlling possession, however. In fact, the run of play right now is going Atleti's way. It's a full house at Craven Cottage, 29,700 in attendance. PSG with a 1-0 lead at the Parc de Princes. Over Man United trying to get back into that tie after Man U dismantled them at Old Trafford. Liverpool with a first half lead over Wolfsburg 2-0. And we make it through our first half without a single highlight. 0-0, still your score. 4-3, the shots in favor of Atleti. We did not manage to get a single one on target. Yet somehow, we are almost even on XG with... Atleti, not quite sure how that works. So we're going to give the team stick at halftime about their shooting. Hopefully it lights a fire under their butts. And we do manage the first three shots of this second half as things starting to go our way. But the first highlight of the match shows Atleti with the ball. Cardoso Reese in the middle, feeding it to the left for Gomez. He does have some space, but he's going to kind of hold up play for a while before finally taking it deep. Gomez looking to center, trying to find Jao Felix back post. Alex Guest is going to deal with that, and Toshimitsu Endo is going to look to start the counterattack. Endo feeding it forward. He's got Omega. Omega moving it to his right. Omega into the box. He shoots, and he cannot beat Aguirre Zabala, who is able to steer the Omega attempt behind the goal to give a corner to Fulham. Endo to deliver. Gnayem cannot get his head over that one. He's going to pop it harmlessly into the stands. But good offensive showing, good play on the counterattack by Toshimitsu Endo, and then ultimately Emmanuel Omega. Now, could Romyantsev have done a little more with that? Maybe? I don't know. 20 minutes remain in this match. We have tired legs on the pitch in the form of Federico Guerrero. Alfonso Matinho is going to come take his place. 
F. Dishes Sokos is unavailable for this match. He is on the bench, uh, but he did pick up that injury in the last match. Rumyansev is not really showing us what we need him to. So Hugo Larson is going to come and take his place. Joe Jones is going to slot in at the base of the midfield. Very good as that deep lying playmaker. Let's see if Larson can do a little bit more with the Mazala role than Romyansev did. In fact, a bit of a disappointing showing for Nikolai Romyansev, which forced us to take the Russian off of the pitch here in the second half. Four minutes added on, and I think we are going to extra time. Yes, we are. 14-8, to eight, your shots on goal in favor of Fulham. The possession number still tilted toward Atleti. Hugo Larson, Kim Young-Suk, each picking up bookings. We'll have to keep our eye on them. I think Fulham has been the better team in general. However, neither, neither side has been able to break through. Nil-nil on the night, still tied 1-1 on aggregate with another 30 minutes of football to play. Oh, it makes me nervous when we get to situations like this because it is now do or die for Fulham. And Jao Felix with the corner kick. Shishoko, Endo, cleared. Jao Felix will track it down, however, and look to keep things going for Atleti. Morgala, Leandro Morgala playing it for David. Ramsey toward the sideline. Runs into a bit of traffic. Back for Leandro Morgala. Finds an open man in Cardoso Reese. Up the left wing. Tiago Enrique. He'll have a free run in. Jao Felix cannot solve Shivlina. What a save by the Czech goalkeeper. But another corner chance for Jao Felix. This one coming from the near side. Just four minutes in to this extra period. Moutinho, though, will settle that down and get it out and mute any threat that Atleti may have posed. So far, we are the only home team that has not scored on the day. 2-0 to Liverpool, 3-0 to Milan, 1-0 to PSG. But if that game is a final, it looks like Manchester United is moving on to the top eight in the Champions League. Still going. We've got more exhausted players on the pitch, and this is what I was worried about. Endo coming off in place of Federico Juarez, who has not seen a lot of playing time. Harvey Vale will take over for Alex Guest. And honestly, that is going to be it for now. I am worried about making too many changes. I do also have to think about if we go to a penalty shootout, which is seeming more and more likely, which players we need to have on the pitch. And we've already taken off quite a few that could benefit us. In fact, we are going two penalties it has come down to this in the champions league i know i'm running the risk of the great football manager jinx but nicholas shavlina has been very good in these situations and he steps in first to face Zhao felix who is gonna try a panenka right up the middle and shavlina is right there to catch it so emmanuel omega now with a chance to put fulham up ahead and he takes care of business Top corner, Samuel Lino, second kicker for Atleti. 1-0 to Fulham. Lino steps up. Shavlina dives to his left, and Lino puts it right up the middle to score. 1-1. Afonso Moutinho, so clutch lately, and clutch again. Burying the penalty. 2-1 to Fulham. Ramsey stepping up. The third kicker for Atleti. Facing Nikola Shavlina, guessed correctly, but Ramsey able to just power it through and tie things up at two. Sissoko, the new boy, in with a weak opportunity, and Aguirre Zavala able to make an easy save to his left. Carnicero, we are tied at two. Both teams have missed once. Carnicero made sure that he did not add to that tally. Atleti taking the 3-2 lead. Larson stepping up, shooting and scoring. 3-3. Three, three. So one of our new boys has scored, the other did not. Leandro Morgala, the German, taking his shot, and he is able to sob Shavlina 4-3. Final kicker of the original five stepping up for the Cottagers. 
and it is Harvey Vale. Vale is one of our best penalty kick takers. And hopefully by saying that, I did not just ruin it here. Nope. He proved us right. He got a gear as a bala to guess wrong. Dove to his right. And he put it the other way. David with the shot. Top shelf. Good. 5-4. Athleti. And I feel like now all of the pressure is on Fulham. The 20-year-old Khaled Ghanayim to step up. Can he solve a Girizabala and keep this going? Yes, is the answer. 5-5 five, five on penalties. Cardoso Reese will be the next taker for Athleti. He steps up and he beats Shavlina. 6-5 Athleti. Who will be the hero for Fulham? Can it be Joe Jones? Now, obviously, Jones needs to score to keep this going. The hero is going to need to be Nikola Shavlina no matter what happens. Jones in scoring. Top corner. Aguirre Zabala did guess correctly but could not get there. Groot Scholten, what a name. Taking the kick. Beating Shavlina. 7-6 to six Atleti. My hands are in prayer pose. Can we keep our dream run through the Champions League alive? This is the deepest Fulham has ever gotten. Even getting to the competition was the deepest that Fulham has ever gotten. Will it end here tonight? Juarez up, shooting and scoring. 7-7 seven to seven with Thiago Henrique to take his chance. The left footer, short run up. Oh, Shavlina, I thought he was going to get that. I thought Shavlina had made the save there. 8-7 Atleti. Aguirre Zabala stepping back in to face Kim Young Suk, the Korean. Can he keep it going? He absolutely can with the low drive inside that far post. Musi. Stepping up, shooting and scoring 9-8 in favor of Atleti. The final outfield kicker for Fulham is going to be Ivan Fresneda. It could down to come down to Shavlina and Aguirre Zabala. Fresneda shoots and scores 9-9 Atleti. And Fulham and Aguirre Zabala stepping up. He'll take it with his left foot, deliver, and he'll find a way to get it past Nikola Shavlina, who did dive to the correct side and could not stop it. 10-9. Shavlina now stepping up. Aguirre Zabala. Can he make the save to put Atleti ahead, or do we continue? Shavlina, mm, what a shot. What an opportunity, and we are back to the top. It's Zhao Felix, who missed his first attempt. Felix, oh, he misses the second one. It's going to clatter off the frame of the goal. Zhao Felix opening the door for Fulham to move ahead in this Champions League. Emmanuel Omega will step up to face Aguirre Zabala. We are tied at 10. If he scores, we win. Omega shoots and Omega scores. Fulham is going on in the Champions League, winning on penalty kicks 11 to 10. And we get 9.6 million euros for our trouble, which pulls us right out of the red. We have money in the bank once again. See, I told you we weren't going to be suffering through our financial troubles for long. But a match like that means I need to take a little bit of a break for myself. So we're going to have a palate cleanser in the league with Chelsea. Hopefully by then we'll know who our opponent's going to be in the quarterfinal of the FA Cup. And we'll get you to that match. Well, now. I know. I said we were going to the match right now, but something came up. Our youth intake, we're not going to dwell on it. It's a pretty poor one. Ian Kelly, the English uh, national left back. No caps on the youth side. No caps, obviously, for the senior team. He is only 15 years old. 
Five foot nine, 134 pounds. He's a player. Seriously, we are going to get to the FA Cup, I swear. It's Man United, by the way, and that match is coming up in about 24 hours from now. But first, we have the Champions League draw. That's right. Who are we taking on next? We almost forgot about this. So Milan has been drawn as the first team out of the bucket, and that is who we are going to take on Pretty quick, easy peasy. Bayer Leverkusen and Real Madrid. Man U's got Liverpool and Barca will take on Juventus. Should we make it through? We will match up against the winner of Bayer Leverkusen and Real Madrid in the semifinals. From my mouth to God's ears. We are finally in the dressing room getting ready for Manchester United on the road at Old Trafford in the quarterfinals of the FA Cup, a date with Southampton awaits the winner of this match. Now, a couple of things that have happened off camera since we last saw each other in the Champions League draw. We handily beat Chelsea 3-1 at Stamford Bridge, and a couple of our players have come to us looking for new contracts. Joe Jones is one of them, and Marvin Akahoman is the other. Jones, we kind of ticked him off by saying, get out of our office now is not the time. We literally had just won our round of 16 matchup against Atleti. A uh, round of 16 matchup he did not really factor in much. Came in off of the bench, so we thought the timing was pretty poor. Marvin Akahoman just came to us. We did promise we would talk to him at the end of the season if we resign either one, I'm not sure. They're probably going to want a ton of money, and they are right now backups on this side, which means they are more easily replaceable than not. That being said, let's get to the football. Shavlin is going to be in goal, a back four of guests, Shishoko, Gnayem, and Ivan Fresneda because Couchman is suspended for this match. A midfield three of Larson with Kim Young-Suk and Tom Burford. Burford scoring twice in that Chelsea match. Toshimitsu Endo on the left. Rumyantsev up the middle, still recovering from a slight knock that he took in that Chelsea match. And Federico Guerrero on the right-hand side. We are not favored to win, but as always, I do fancy our chances in this matchup. All of the pressure is on Manchester United, except for the fact that, you know, we are the holders of this competition and we would really like to move forward. Josip Schutelo picking up an early yellow card, but a potential injury to Shavlina could hamper him. Do we just bring in Kim Seon Il, who is a very, very, very capable, capable goalkeeper at the ripe old age of 20 years old? We shall see. Only... Two shots so far in this match, both of them have gone towards Manchester United, but not really making any kind of headway as we make our way into the final couple of minutes of this first half. And as we've been seeing quite often, a first half without a single highlight. Nil, nil is your score. We did manage to finally get off one shot on goal while enjoying 55% of the possession. So we're going to tell the team how disappointed this has been to watch so far and to get their butts in gear. Changes may need to be made. We are not going to make any alterations, obviously, at the half. 72,041 on hand. 1,700 have made the trek up from London to support the Cottagers. Federico Guerrero not having a very good game. Tom Burford not having the type of match that he had last week, and we are getting some tired legs. So substitutions are in the offing. Uh, Federico Juarez will come in for Toshimitsu Endo. Guerrero will make way for Moutinho. That seems to be a pretty common change we are making. Kim Young-Suk for Joe Jones, who will swap places with Hugo Larson. Three alterations to the lineup. And uh, do we change mentality? I don't think so. First highlight of the match, and Manchester United has it in our third. The low. Wavi Guerra, he is going to miss that one. Why? Did I say Wavi? Javi Guerra. Javi Guerra. Fresneda with the long the near side, dropping it for Gnayem. 
Scott Joe Jones will have it taken away by Acosta. Endrick feeding Acosta again. Jones can't get it away. Acosta moving it wide. Dropping it for Variga. He's got Rojas looking for Acosta. Acosta for Endrick. And Endrick is going to put it in for the first goal of the match. However, VAR is going to check to see if he was offside. And they will say that he was not. Endrick with, I believe, his 10th goal on the season in all competitions beating Nikola Shavlina, and we are definitely going to have to step things up in the final 10 minutes. We are going to go to a very attacking mentality. We are going to demand more from our team as Shudalo looking to move it forward. Javi Guerra finds Enzo, moving it to the left. Rojas for Variga. Variga's got some space, but a heavy touch, and he loses it to Matinho. Matinho into the middle, wide to the left. He's got Guest. Guest with a head of steam. Throwing the cross in, and that will be intercepted, and the attack has ended. Thrown ahead, Acosta moving past his man into the middle. Endrick's shot is going to whistle over everything, but it looks like Yvonne Fresneda got a piece of it, so it's going to be a corner kick for Man U. Seven minutes remaining of the original 90. Javi Guerra lifting it high towards Shudalo. It will be cleared. Chasing it down is Federico Juarez or Francisco Juarez. Whatever his first name is. Juarez has it. Back for Ivan Fresneda. Moutinho along the near sideline. His cannot get overtaken. Moutinho. Larson looking for Moutinho again. Cleared only as far as Fresneda. Fresneda. Larson with a drive. And Trubin diving for it. But it will whistle wide oh no that could have been our best and only opportunity to move forward in the fa cup all right well we still have the champions league and an opportunity to win the premier league because the fa cup is going to escape our grasp we are not going to repeat there will be no potential double for fulham we do have eight matches left to go in the league, and things are tightening up. Just eight points separating us and Manchester City. We do have a game in hand on them. A chance at the Premier League title is in the offing if we can keep this run of form in the league going. We've increased our lead over third place to four points. Arsenal and Newcastle are Quite close behind us. Man U is charging up as well. They are currently in the Europa League place, also on 58 points. So things pretty tight from second to fifth, but they're getting tighter between first and second. And that is our new goal. Plus, oh yeah, we've got the Champions League still too. And we will be back Monday morning to take on Milan in the quarterfinals of the UEFA Champions League. It's going to be tough going after this, but that's a problem I would like to have. If you have not done so already, please hit the like button on this video. Make sure the algorithm knows that you enjoy this content so more people can enjoy it. Also, if you are new to the channel or you haven't done so already, please subscribe, turn on your notifications, and have a fantastic weekend, everybody. I'll see you back here on Monday. Until then, bye bar.